If you pay attention to too much mainstream media, you've heard all about the hockey player Ivan Provorov, how he's facing condemnation for refusing to wear an LGBT shirt, and good for him. You know, will be it for Christians to actually act like Christians in the modern age. It's good to see it every once in a while. But what you haven't heard about is the pedophilia ring over in Georgia in which two homosexual men decided to adopt two boys so that they could sexually assault them and sell them to other homosexuals in their area. So let's talk about that story because that seems like the one that actually matters to me. Call me crazy. But for some reason, this one isn't the one that's dominating headlines. Instead, we're talking about hockey players and which shirts they decide to wear so we can, you know, have some manufactured outrage. I'm not playing. So, over in Georgia, you did have, in fact, two homosexual men who the state of Georgia had given a marriage certificate to, so a lot of outlets will refer to them as being married. I won't. But uh, their names are William Zulak Jr. and Zachary Zulak. I'm also not going to call these pedophiles fathers at any point. I think it's disgusting when people do. They did adopt two young boys, now aged 9 and 11. They did so out of an adoption agency called All God's Children, so it was a Christian adoption agency despite the fact that they uh, dealt with homosexual men and lend lended them children, but this adoption agency, which no longer exists, it specialized in housing special needs cases, as they put it. So more difficult cases where you've got siblings involved, uh, those with behavioral problems, uh, some kind of, I hate to use the term baggage, but baggage. Um, in this particular instance of these two boys, they were brothers and their biological parents were heroin addicts and the older boy apparently had some kind of behavioral difficulty at some point. Now, this adoption agency you know, got its children through the, the Georgia Department of Human Services. Now, there was a time not that long ago in which homosexuals weren't able to adopt children. This whole thing of, you know, giving children out to gay couples is pretty new. It was previously prevented for a lot of different reasons. Firstly, because it was accepted that homosexuals are sexually disordered, and so you don't want to put children into that home. It was accepted that they give a poor example of a family. Uh, it was said that children deserve a mother and a father that homosexuals, as a product of their condition, are more likely to engage in pedophilia than heterosexuals. I know it's politically incorrect, I don't care. Yes, pedophilia happens, including, you know, with straight couples, of course. But the job of an adoption agency is to try and limit it as much as possible. Eliminating, you know, homosexuals was part of that. And another point that's very politically, politically incorrect now is that pedophilia is how homosexuals reproduce. I'll say the things that others won't. So, uh, there's a modern push to force a different adoption agencies to do this. There have been a lot of different lawsuits. Uh, some adoption agencies have even shut down to avoid doing this. Uh, I know some Catholic agencies in certain states have been forced to shut down because the alternative was uh, to do this, to, to house children in same-sex households, and they would play no part in such an evil. So, looking at this particular case, though, seven years prior to this adoption, uh, one of the men, Zachary, was accused of being a child rapist, but was never charged. He had allegedly lured a 14-year-old boy to a home, had anal sex with the underage boy, and no charges were filed. So there's, there's a lot wrong here. You would think this would be a scandal all over the news, and yet it's not. That adoption agency, by the way, it was dissolved in October 2022. Uh, they say due to a lack of funding. Uh, we don't know the real reason, but in any case, that's what they that's what they say. So it's no longer in the care of children, if we can say that there was some care involved. I don't know. Now, um, these two men, William and Zachary, have been indicted by a grand jury on the charges of incest, aggravated sodomy, aggravated child molestation, felony sexual exploitation of children, and felony prostitution of a minor. See, not only did they adopt these children and sexually abuse them, they also made child pornography using these children, who they outrageously referred to as their sons online, and then sold that to others. Then they tried to sell these children to other men that they 
met online. The, um, the boy that just turned 11, so the older boy, suffered injuries as a result of being raped uh, by, uh, by one of these men. William and Zachary, these men, were huge in the LGBT media. Uh, they were sort of like poster poster boys, or if we can, I guess not boys, but yeah, uh, they were the the family that we're all supposed to applaud and say, look, look how it can be done. Look at what good parents they make. These are the things that we're supposed to assume. They marched these two men in the Atlanta Pride Parade and the AIDS Walk Atlanta. Zachary Zulak was a devoted supporter of Black Lives Matter. Are you beginning to see why this isn't all over the, the news and instead we're talking about hockey players? They had pride garbage all over their home, including on the doorstep, just so you know, because they identify themselves sort of primarily, their entire identity is based around them being homosexual. Now, they have a very oversized home, it's unknown exactly where they got their money from, because both of them work in careers that have a a revenue, or should have a revenue, that's under $100,000 a year. Their home is not reflective of that. So it might have something to do with them selling or sexually exploiting uh, their children. They're currently facing over nine life sentences, and that doesn't seem like enough somehow. They're accused of prostituting the children to at least two other men that we that we know of and who have been arrested. So there's Hunter Lawless is one of these men, and Luis uh, Viz Vizcaro Sanchez. That's my best pronunciation. Um, they also these uh, Hunter and Luis apparently also received pornography from the two men who were pretending to be fathers. Um, one of these who had adopted the, the child, Zachary, texted Hunter Lawless on Snapchat with, I'm going to send to this, it says, I'm going to sleep with my son tonight, stand by. And then he obviously recorded and sent that over to this individual. Their property, the house and their cars have now been seized by investigators because they used their home for these criminal acts and they used their vehicle to transport the children that they tried to turn into prostitutes. Um, the two men who've been arrested in the documents that have come out, including like their, their phone logs and this kind of stuff, they seem to be mostly complaining about their lost property. And we're not talking about the children. They see their children as commodities along, but they're primarily concerned with their home and their cars. And they're concerned about that, not, not what happened to the kids. Uh, who were apparently abused in other ways as well. Um, it, they still kind of basically find ways to make themselves the victims of all of this, as you see very commonly in the in the gay community. But anyway, uh, most of the reporting for this comes from Town Hall. There was a woman there named uh, Mia Cathal who did tremendous amount of work in, in digging through this and putting it out there, but ultimately the mainstream media doesn't think that this story is worthy of coverage, while instead they they want to highlight a case where they think we should all be looking, we should all be paying attention to the guy who refused to wear a, a pride shirt, which is it's ridiculous that it's made the news. I mean, I think the guy did the right thing, of course. Um, but it, it's the top story, and, and this one this one isn't. There's something seriously wrong with that. And in general, when you have crimes like this, they're not covered by the mainstream media because it runs counter to the narrative. These are considered to be sort of their people, you might say. These are one of the protected classes that the mainstream media and academia seeks to protect in our, in our society. It's dark and it's evil, and I think it is beneficial to draw attention to cases like this. Uh, they do happen way too often. Um, and the victims of these cases deserve at least the justice of it being covered. You know, like they're, to some degree, I think that when stories like this are buried, it says to victims of similar cases 
that their cases don't have value or merit, that their suffering was was not really suffering, that it doesn't really matter to the collective, because how could it, because everyone just sort of looks away. There's something really wrong with that, and I think we should work to uh, to remedy it. You made it to the end. You either really liked or really hated that video. Let's assume you liked it. There are a lot more that you can choose from, and also you can follow me on Gab and various other social media sites, and if you are able to support the channel, that's an option for you too. There are links in the description below. Thank you so much.